nerve center. This is the place where it all happens. And I came here with a heart full of gratitude for individuals who literally had to risk it all to show up to their jobs and to keep our city running. And so I just want to take a few minutes to thank them and to thank our team here. I'm joined by Jana Lieber, who you all know well, the chair and CEO of the MTA. We've been in constant communication even prior to the first rain falling to make sure that our system here uh, would make sure it could continue delivering for New Yorkers as they continue to rely on that. Also joined by Demetrius Critchlow, uh, the New York City Transit Senior Vice President of Subways, uh, who has been intensely engaged in our storm response as well. Uh, there are some New Yorkers who've never seen the likes of which we experienced yesterday, I mean, in their entire lives. This event was historic. In some areas, it was record-shattering. And it is the most rain ever recorded in a single day at a place like JFK, ever. Not just this summer, not this year, but ever. And the records are still coming in. We're still monitoring, and the rain is still falling. And in, such, in some places, it'll be the most rain that has ever hit in 70 years. And I want to say this, because New Yorkers heeded our warning. And when they could, they stayed home. And most importantly, they stayed off the roads. What had been described by myself as a potentially life-threatening event ended up being a, play, a time when people listened, they reacted properly, they took precautions, and no lives were lost. I want to thank New Yorkers for that. They had a dis major disruption in their lives, concern, anxiety. Was their kids went off to school and would they be able to get home? Are they going to be able to get home for their jobs, from their jobs at the end of the day? Could our first responders, uh, the nurses and doctors who need to show up in hospitals, would they be able to get to their jobs and get home at the end of the day? So it was quite extraordinary that this system that is the lifeblood of New York City kept it all going. This was the kind of rain that was once unimaginable. We called them once-in-a-century storms. But this is the third time since I was sworn in two years ago I've had a once-in-a-century storm. This includes the historic flooding we had in the Hudson Valley this summer, which was deemed a 1,000-year flooding event. So it's Mother Nature at her most powerful. It was so bad that even the sea lions at the zoo tried to escape. Uh, don't know what to say about that, but they're back safely. And of course, we know this is a result of climate change. This is unfortunately what we have to expect as the new normal. It makes us be more prepared than ever before. And it requires us to focus on resiliency, to head off the horrific impacts that could be there if we're not ready for the next storm. So we started warning New Yorkers about this the night before, giving them time, prepositioning our assets, having the three-way authority personnel, DOT personnel, uh, emergency responders, our swift water teams. You don't call them to come to a region once the crisis has already started. You have to pre-position them, and that's exactly what we did. And I want to thank all the first responders who did show up, including our swift water teams who made 28 rescues. 28 rescues in raging water to help save New Yorkers in the Hudson Valley and on Long Island yesterday. And thousands of utility crews have also been on standby ready to keep our state moving. The coordination with the localities has been extraordinary, uh, from the city of New York to our county governments, mayors, town supervisors, county executives, and working with our local fire departments and even the volunteers who showed up. I've been in constant communication with our teams, as have my individuals. We've been talking to uh, Mayor Adams. I spoke to County Executive George Latimer. I spoke to County Executive Bruce Blakeman in Nassau County. Spoke to the borough president. Spoke to Leader Stuart Cousins. Her own community of Yonkers was hit hard. Uh, spoke to the mayors of uh, New Rochelle and Jean Patterson Howard. We talked to her about what was going on in Mount Vernon. So I've been in constant communication saying, if you need National Guard, Tell me. If you need more resources, tell me. We will make sure they're there to support you. But I want to emphasize how serious this event was. My first two weeks on the job as governor, two years ago, I had not one but two hurricane events to deal with. This is the scale in terms of the water that dropped from the heavens during this torrential rain event that 
actually was the same as Hurricane Ida. The blessing was is that we didn't have the wind associated with it that accompanied Hurricane Ida. But I remember that event like it was yesterday. And my fear and why I had so many warnings out was that people in these basement apartments are so vulnerable that I saw the places where the water came in through the door and there was no escape out the back. And people literally drowned in their homes. And one individual I met, his name was Junior, you know, large man, said he just escaped with barely the last breath he could muster because the water had gotten up to here. In his home, he couldn't get out. That's why the urgent call, and I thank the media for getting this out. The water starts coming. Don't wait till it's up to your knees to leave your house. Just get out. Take your family, take your kids, take your pets. Get out before it gets that bad. So that was the experience I went through, and I'll never get the images of those flooded communities out of my mind and the devastation, the pain that people experience. So we're going to continue to remain vigilant, give out the warnings as early as we possibly can. And I also want to just talk about what the MTA did during this crisis. When the trains and buses of the MTA stop, the city stops. Full stop. That's the result. We know that. And it is so essential that we keep these services going because people depend on it. Their lives depend on it. And I'm really proud to announce that right now, full weekend service throughout the system is up and running. That is an extraordinary accomplishment. To think that 24 hours ago, even 18 hours ago, we could have said that, uh, that would have been in doubt. And I just walked through the control center and had a chance to talk to scores of people who had to come in here on their own. They have, they have the same commuting challenges as everybody else in New York does. They showed up. They stayed around the clock. They consumed a lot of coffee and pizzas, but they got the job done and making sure that we could get back as soon as possible. So all the subways are operational, Metro North, below the Southeast Station, Long Island Railroad, and the paratransit services are all functioning this morning. But it's not just about our main focus, which is, which is to protect the passengers. We had to protect the infrastructure of our trains and subways, even as the flood waters were pouring into the systems. New York City sewers can handle a certain amount of rain, 1.75 inches rain per hour. Okay, we hit three inches an hour in many places, so it's always going to flood. But what they did, and, and Jana would describe more, that you have to reroute the trains around the problem areas. You have to be pumping. Have the pumps in place in advance. It doesn't help when there's three feet of water to start thinking we should bring pumps in. This is what experience is all about. This is how we responded to this. And so I also want to thank our bus drivers. My God, at one time during the storm, we had 4,300 buses on the roads. At the peak, it was about 3,500 a little bit later in the day. What these buses did... And these brave bus drivers, the bus operators, was to be able to give an alternative, a lifeline to people who otherwise would have been stranded. The last we want is ever for someone to be stranded in a tunnel. That is frightening. So when things are starting to look bad, the trains have to be pulled back into the station. Passengers discharged. But what happens then? Where do they go? And that's something we were dealt with literally by the minute yesterday to make sure that there were buses in place, enough operators called in to service them to make sure we could keep it going as well. So these bus drivers were the true heroes. They drove into water not knowing what was on the other side. They knew their job was to get people to the next destination safely, and they did an extraordinary job. Ninety-nine percent of the bus routes continued during the storm. During record rainfall, ninety-nine percent of the buses did their jobs and it helped offset the impact that otherwise would have been more detrimental to our Safeways. So uh, the message for all of us, always be vigilant, focus on the short-term crisis, but do an after-action report and see there's areas where we can continue to improve. I'll always push our teams to improve, but we have to keep an eye on the future. This is the new normal. We have to be vigilant, be prepared, but build resiliency into the system make the improvements that we spoke about even right after Hurricane Ida, and, and Jana will speak about some of those, but also to strengthen our infrastructure and to protect this way of life, to protect this city, protect this region. We have to make sure we have the resources to continue making these investments. And that's why, once again, we'll be unveiling congestion pricing next year. And that is an opportunity for us to raise the funds, have the funds set aside in the capital improvements so we can continue making sure that we're ready 
for not the storms of 1,000 years or the storms of 100 years, but the storms that are literally coming month by month. So we're ready. And with that, I want to again commend everyone here at this nerve center, everyone throughout the entire system of the MTA. You are our heroes, you are extraordinary, and you got the job done. And the leader of the pack is one and only Jana Lieber. Jana. Thank you, Governor. You, you really hit all the major points. This is an incredible moment of both relief and pride for all of us, all of us New Yorkers and all of us who work at the MTA. Listen, on Thursday, I consulted with, this, with the governor, and, we, and she, under her leadership, we made that announcement. We said to New Yorkers, this is a serious storm. We are taking it seriously. We all need to prepare for another one of those historic weather events. Fortunately, it was a Friday. We all know that in the era of hybrid work post-pandemic, Fridays tend to be light. But New Yorkers heeded the governor's warning. They heeded the MTA's warning, so we did have fewer people out. But for the people who were out, it was a tough day. It was a tough day, and as the governor said, a lot of people had their travel disrupted. But we saw many fewer of those incredible uh, situations where passengers are put in the, the way of massive water. And that was partly because, as the governor said, after Ida, we went you know, station by station that had been subjected to those flash flooding, torrential downpours that impacted on, on riders. And we worked with the city's DEP and we said, what's going on here? Can we raise stairs right outside the, uh, the, the stairway that enters the station to prevent water from getting in? Can, closing, actually working hard to, to close drains and DEP, once we had done that, took extra effort to make sure all the drains in an area were working. And again, it had benefits. So the the, the, the announcement, the planning that was done well in advance, the MTA then took its preparatory activities to make sure all the drains were here, all the grates were covered, all the infrastructure that we have, and that so much of it we've gotten in our investments that we've made post-Sandy, which will now be supplemented under the governor's leadership in the months to come. And we did have an impact and minimize what was going on. We had only one station where water reached, God forbid, up to the platform level. That was not true in Hurricane Ida, which was my first introduction to the leadership of Governor Hochul. Our amazing workforce showed up. That is the story that we, we cannot say enough about, is that the workforce somehow finds their way there and they step up and they allow us to put on 99 percent of bus service. And they allow us, when the water does recede, to go out and check all the electrical systems, all the third rail power, get out there, make sure all the track circuits are moving. So we had service restored by about 8 p.m., really full subway service by 8, 8.30 p.m. And right now, Governor, as you were speaking, the final small branch north of, of, of Southeast on the Metro North system has been restored. It is literally being restored as we were, as we, you know, that the incredible prepositioning by our suburban rail team to have all of the tree cutting equipment and power and, and readiness for power lines going down and, and being able to restore utilities. So, again, announcement, preparation, execution, amazing workforce. And finally, I have to say about this, Governor, we wouldn't have all these people ready to work and, to, and deal with these problems if the governor of the state of New York, with the support of the legislature, didn't solve the MTA's budget problem. We were looking at massive cuts, massive cuts to service, but also to all of the operational professionals. She solved it. This budget year, the MTA has a balanced budget as a result of Governor Hochul's leadership, and that means that we have the professionals who are capable of responding to emergencies of this kind and putting back, putting service back together and not having to cut lines and not having to raise the fare by a buck or more. This governor has put us in a position to withstand these types of events and I thank you, Governor Hope. Thank you. Thank you. Um, before I open up to questions, I wanted to acknowledge something else that's happening uh, in our nation's capital. Uh, we are deeply concerned about the impending shutdown on Monday, I was talking about the ticking time bomb, the, what I call the doomsday clock, that would expire at 11.59 tonight. 
Well, we are just hours away from that moment. It looks like the, that train wreck will not be averted. And Republicans in Washington will now be responsible for undermining our democracy and falling prey to the reign of tyranny by the few holding the rest of the country and all of us, and as a governor, holding my ability to take care of the people of the state, holding all of us hostage to their demands. This is exactly what our founding fathers and others have always warned against. And as a result, some of the collateral damage of this, think about our military personnel, think about the border personnel, think about the fact that they're supposed to show up to work and not get paid. Last I checked, uh, they still have bills to pay. They still have mouths to feed in their houses. So it's even disrespecting those who put on a uniform to protect us and our way of life. And that is so egregious. We'll have 800 fewer Customs and Border Protection agents keeping us safe. Now, 800 fewer at a time when President Biden's trying to ramp up what we're doing at the border. We're feeling the effects here in New York City. Why would they do that? Because they don't care. They want to bring this country to its knees. They're so callous. Here in New York, we have almost 20,000 active duty members at risk of not being paid. They, too, have families to take care of. They're not wealthy people. They don't have a big bank account to cover for this. Just tuition bills might be due. The utility bills are due. The grocery bills seem so high. But they also say... To all the 85,000 federal employees that live in the nine districts of the Republicans who represent part of our state, 7,000 vulnerable women and children nationwide, including 400,000 who live here, you know, the list goes on. It goes on and on and on. And it doesn't have to be this way. I served as a member of Congress. Everybody likes to bring you to the cliff and then they do sit down, and usually sanity prevails. This time, it just seems that there's such a disrespect for institutions and the role they are sent to Washington to play, which is to represent their districts, but also protect America, take care of America's needs. So I don't see any end in sight at this moment. We'll deal with it. New York State will have to make adjustments try to help our people as best we can. But my final message is it does not have to be this way. Washington Republicans, stop. Stop right now. Do your jobs and help America recover from your threats. At this point, I'll be happy to take any questions on the topic for starts, and Jan and I can answer questions about the services here and answer anything else. Let, let, let's start with Lindsay Tuchman on her first day back in New York now with Channel 7. Welcome, Thank Lindsay. You, welcome. Lindsay. Welcome, Lindsay. Thank you, Governor. Um, I have a question for either of you. You mentioned uh, resiliency efforts. That, of course, is going to take several years, given that many of these repairs stem from Superstorm Sandy. What immediate uh, changes can be made for people who do need to commute? I was on the train yesterday. I got stuck for over an hour and a half. I looked at Ubers. They were surging. I panicked briefly yeah. about not being able to get home. What can we do for people who have to take the train in a future storm that could happen tomorrow? Yeah. Um, I'll let Jano speak about the long term, but in the short term, he described already what we did in the aftermath of Hurricane Ida. You know, we we're saying, how is it that water is rushing down these steps? Is there anything we can do to make sure that doesn't happen again? And you don't have scenes of that throughout the system this storm because you do something real basic. You lift up platforms, you clean out the grates, you work on the sewers, you make sure that all the areas surrounding the entrance to those stations are protected. We can't solve for every single circumstance, but we need to be using all the tools at our disposal today to do that because this storm today could be repeated again next week at the rate we're going. We cannot say we're good for the next 100 years. That's not what I've seen. Uh, Jano? Yeah, I, I think you, you hit on the right points, which is, that one, we have to work with the city to increase the storm sewer system capacity. That really is, we keep talking about the fact that the system was designed 
long ago for uh, a rainfall at the rate of one three quarters inches per hour, and we're consistently getting more than that. So we need additional outflow. In, in some cases, that may require mechanical systems that push water out rather than just the gravity-fed systems that prevail in so much of the city. So that investment, which is, you know, at the, at the city level to a great extent, is something we've been working with uh, the city DEP about, and I know the governor is supporting the city's efforts on that front. In the meantime, we're trying to do all the simple stuff. We go around to every station that had a water problem, and we did this right after Ida, with city DEP, with city DOT, and we look at the simple stuff. Are the, has the asphalt in the street been added and added such that the curb no longer, the curb has disappeared and the water's not being channeled to the catch basins as it should. Simple stuff like that. Making sure that the, all the drains are functional, both at the street level operated by the city, but also in our own system. Raising the stairs outside of subway entrances so that you get another six or eight inches of protection from surrounding water. We did all of that, and it actually paid off this time, but we have a long way to go, and you're right on that we have to continue to make major resiliency investments. One final word, the big post-Sandy investments in low-lying key facilities like the Coney Island Yard and the 207th Street Yard have really paid off in these mega water events. We need to continue those major investments. That's why the governor's comments about uh, how, we, how we need to, to, to get additional resources are important. All right, we have time for a couple more. Rebecca White here from the New York Daily News. Right Hi, sorry, I'm here. over here. Um, just two quick questions, Governor. Um, is the state of emergency still in effect, and will there be money available to businesses and homes damaged by the flooding? Thank you. The state of emergency is still in effect for the next six days. A state of emergency allows me to suspend any laws or barriers that could be in the way of me being able to deploy the resources when I need to or to enter into emergency contracts to assist with the recovery or while an event is unfolding. And it also, as I spoke to all the county and borough leaders, start keeping tabs of your expenses, the overtime, the damage to public buildings, the damages to your infrastructure, because what I have done, and I, and I spoke with the White House yesterday, and I spoke with uh, Majority Leader Schumer, who contacted me immediately, uh, they're prepared to support an emergency declaration, a uh, declaration of disaster from the federal government if necessary. There is a threshold that has to be met, $30 million worth of damage. So we're in, it'll take a number of weeks for us to add up and calculate that, but that is the trigger. First I start with an emergency declaration, then we add up the numbers, see what's needed, does it qualify, put that request into the feds, and if that's granted, there are circumstances where there could be some assistance, but I, I want to caution everyone that the federal government does not assist a lot in that space. There have been a lot of people disappointed, and we really do need more resources into FEMA and helping people, particularly those who live in those, those flood-prone areas. Flood insurance is so outrageously expensive, but now we're seeing patterns, you know, vulnerability hitting the same regions, and these families and these homes and businesses are getting battered and battered and battered, and we, they do need some relief, and we're going to continue to call on the federal government uh, not to be shut down, but actually to continue working to help people like those affected by storms. All right, last question is Miles Miller back here from WNBC. Governor, I'm happy that we both got the same style memo this morning. It uh, <laughs> works for both of us. Um, if uh, Jano can talk about, you know, there was uh, the press conference before yesterday's storm to push more people to take mass transit, not to travel by roads. People who did that wind up on the train for five hours. Gail Brewer posted she was on the ground for two hours, you know, talking to uh, other passengers. Why push people into the subways if there's the potential they do get stuck underground, especially with the torrential downpour? Well, first of all, what we were first trying to do is to caution people about traveling at all, and I think we accomplished that. That's probably the most important part of that early warning that we put in effect. The other factor that we urged, and I continue to urge it throughout the day, was the use of the bus system, which was 99 percent. And um, where you had, what I kept saying was, if you have a bus option, use it, because that's probably the best way to get to your destination. So we did, we did protect, uh, I, I think, do something to sort of moderate the use of the subways that were, were somewhat vulnerable. And then when, when the p problems developed, and it was hard to predict exactly where they were. We all know 
there was this torrential downpour in Brooklyn early in the morning, had special localized effects there. Um, we were able to bring everybody back to the station. I know people were delayed. There's no question. But we, you know, we didn't have uh, uh, you know, great numbers of people who were stuck on trains in tunnels, which is really the thing we try to avoid most. So we were really happy with the way the public responded to the state and the MTA's warnings, and we were happy about what we were able to do to protect everybody on the day. All right. Thanks, everybody. All right, thank you, everybody.